Hello everybody, it is Michael Brownstein here with the Food and Wildlife Channel and I'm here with the beautiful Eva Clay. And today she is cooking Roladen Polersraze, also known as beef rollup. So let's get into it. So today for our Polish dinner, we'll make zraze. Those are called Roladen in German and every country in Europe has their own variation. This is the zraze that my mom used to make and takes me back home to my childhood. And also I will make sauerkraut koslo, another delicious little option that's very healthy. Uh, we'll make that to go with our zrazy. And besides that, we won't film it, but I'll make little mashed potatoes to go with it. So we have a full Polish dinner. For our koslo, we have sauerkraut, a uh, little bit of shredded carrot, quarter onion chopped, small apple shredded, a little bit of olive oil, sugar, salt and pepper to taste. For the zrazy, we need beef, a little bit of butter, sliced onions, pickles, mustard, salt and pepper to taste, for, and some bacon. For our sauce, we'll need two tablespoons of flour, about half a cup of sour cream, bay leaf, and about four or five peppercorns. And also we'll need some olive oil and to dust some flour to dust our zrazy when we're frying them up. So for our koslo, first we need drink cabbage, I mean sauerkraut. And we'll put in a big, bigger bowl. Shredded apple, it's very simple. Shredded carrots. Quarter, a little bit of chopped onion to taste. Some people like it more, some people like it less. A little bit of olive oil. I think it was about two tablespoons in here. A little bit of sugar for low sweetness. And we'll use a little bit of cracked pepper. And we'll use a little bit of salt, just a little bit. Okay. And we'll mix it together and we'll check for the flavor. And then we'll let it sit in the refrigerator until our dinner is ready. To tenderize the meat, I like to first put a little towel underneath my board um, so it will absorb the shock and it won't be as loud in your kitchen. Then I like to take a little bit of cling wrap and cover that. We use cling wrap so the little meat particles are not spraying all over your kitchen and the counter. Then we'll take a little bit of beef. Okay, this beef is pretty thin already. So we're gonna just tenderize a little bit. And then we'll flip over and do it again. Okay. Then we'll take our beef. It's pretty thin. And we'll put it on the side. And we repeat this process until our, our beef is uh, tenderized. So to make our zraze rouladen, we'll take a little bit of beef first. We'll put a little salt and pepper on it, on both sides. Just a little bit because we'll add other things to it. So you don't want it to be too salty. But so, a little bit of salt, a little pepper again. And a little bit of Dijon mustard. You can use any type of mustard you like as long as it's not yellow mustard. Okay. And then we'll take a slice or two or bacon. It's your own preference. I like one. And then I'll put the pickle here. Okay. And a little bit of onion. Hmm. Okay. A 
Slavonians. And also we have handy dandy little toothpicks that we'll use. So what I like to do is I like to take our meat. I'll, I'll show you how I do it. Okay. And all the things that we just put in, just roll them very tightly, as tightly as you can. And then after you do that, you just put a toothpick through it so it cooks this way. You don't really want to um, make the roll out and thick, thicker than this, because then it will be hard for you to find a toothpick and you don't want to serve your food with toothpick in it. This is just to hold it in place for now. So we'll, we'll try to finish up all the roulades and then we'll dust them and, and fry them. We'll be right back. So for our roulade, the next step, there's raze. We'll put a little bit of olive oil in a pan, non-stick pan, preferably, and some of the butter. I'll put a little bit, like half of this, so it's about a tablespoon. Okay, now we'll take our zrazy and we dredge them a little bit in the flour on all the sides. Okay, and we'll throw them in the oil. Okay, so this step is to get a little bit of caramelization going. When frying them, you don't want to overcrowd the pan because you want them to get nice and caramelized on each and every side. So I have turned the zraze on the other side and as you see the little toothpicks are needed to keep it in place. So after they brown on both sides, we'll place them in our Dutch oven. So we're deglazing the pan and we'll take all those drippings okay, and put them right in, the, in our roulade. And then we'll add the rest of our broth to this. Okay. And as also bay leaf and some of our peppercorns. And to we'll place all of this in the 375 oven for about 45 minutes, I would say. And we'll be right back. So right now, we're going to check on our zrazy and see where we're at. Oh, they look beautiful. Oh, my goodness. They smell so good. All right. Oh, yeah. They're tender. They're fork tender. Okay. So the next step. We'll try to take all the toothpicks out. So it's good to know how many you used. So it's one, two, because you don't want to serve your food with toothpicks in it. And then after we take all of them out, we'll come back and we'll make the gravy. So let's check the gravy. Oh, it's delicious. I, I think we don't need to do anything with that. The aju from the zraze is just fabulous. So, if you would like, you can add a little bit of sour cream and you can watch our other videos with the sour cream tempering. You can add a little bit of flour if you like to thicken your gravy a little bit and I would add a little bit of flour and water and then bring it to a boil. It would make a fabulous, fabulous gravy. But for my liking and the way my mom served it, this would be thick enough to be served over mashed potatoes and with some sauerkraut kosla. Fabulous. Well, we're back. And the beautiful Miss Eva made this meal and plated it up. And let's give it a try. Go ahead while well, I'm talking about it. So first of all, I would like to say that this is great with any size that you like. Uh, second of all, it would be perfect meal with spetzel, the German spetzel, or the Polish kopitka that I made the other day on, as one of our videos. So if you would like to learn about the Polish kopitka, it would be fabulous. 
with this meal and I had it with the kapitka all the time when I was growing up. But mashed potatoes, a little sour cream, a little butter, salt and pepper, perfect. So Michael, you, you took a little bite. I did take a bite and this is freaking amazing, for real. Uh, real beefy, I could taste the pickle, the onion, the bacon, and I haven't even tried the rest of it, but it, this the beef that I tried was A-OK -okay, amazing. Really? Yes, yeah, you did a great job. Thank you, baby. Um, I kept it in the oven for about an hour, and it just, if you have a Dutch oven, and you put beef broth, and really no other seasoning, uh, just the bay leaf and peppercorns, it cooked it down to a perfect, perfect gravy, right. au jus gravy. Well, you had the flour on it from the, yes. uh, and so it, mm -hmm. it made it a gravy yes, for sure. Yes, exactly. That was perfect. Great mm -hmm. idea, actually. Good, good. I'll try it. I'm going to try the other side, <laughs> the potatoes. Yes. I'll make myself a bite of everything. You should get a bite of mm. everything. The potatoes are very good, especially with the gravy on them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. And the Polish coleslaw is very good as well. Polish sauerkraut as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's very good with the apple and everything in it. I'm going to try another bite. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm definitely taken back home to my mom's kitchen. That's a very Polish meal. Well, you outdid yourself as usual. Thank you. And on that note. Oh, cheers. Na zdrowie. Till next time. Kismachnego.